this very irregular situation. You're on board a 747 and you're kind of in the middle of nowhere, really. Kind of above the Pacific. Yes, there is an island in front of us. And we're landing on this island because we quite obviously have some engine trouble. Yes, our engine number one has caught fire. So what you would do, of course, in a situation like that is discharge it. Come on. There we go. Something like that. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think that's stopping the fire just fine. We can try to land here on this island here. As you can see, we've got a proper runway on this island, too. Mm hmm. You know, your typical emergency landing right here. All right. That has been a. A uh, very normal landing. Yes, indeed. Everything seems quite all right. Seems quite fine. Yes, we've all survived this. At least in the simulator, this was a hard landing. No, everything is fine, but you're here now on this random island, very random location, and you're stuck on board a 747 that, of course, needs engine replacement. And now this is the question, how do you get a 747 engine here to this random place? I mean, of course, there's lots of methods to get it shipped. You can take an Antonov, you can have it shipped by, you know, ship. But everybody, today let's talk about a very efficient way to transport a 747 engine around. It's right from the Qantas website here. Oh, look at this interesting picture. This is not a normal 747 at all. It's got five engines and it flies. Yes, it did fly. This was a case in 2016 where Qantas really needed an engine in Joburg in South Africa. And the quickest, most efficient and easiest way to do that was just to bring that 747 engine with the 747, strap it below the wing. Something that's definitely possible, obviously, on the 74. Even posted a very interesting YouTube video. The fifth so part, really behind the scenes look. What we did was we used one of our Boeing 747 aircraft to transport a Rolls-Royce engine under the wing. Yeah, that makes sense. Now this was possible through the spare engine carriage kit. In short, Isaac. It turns out it's very easy to mount a external fifth engine onto the 747. It is a very capable airliner after all. But everybody, in today's video, I would really like to find out, oh, well, how does it really affect the flying? For that, I did some magicness. Let's maybe see here. I have built a very interesting version of the 747. Very much the savior of the day indeed, yes. Yes, I've rebuilt the original 747-5 engine plane here. Nice homage to Qantas. I mean, they don't fly their 747s anymore. They haven't done that in a few years. They scrapped them all, but we have it here in the flight simulator. Oh no, that is a very weird sight indeed. This was actually relatively easy to just reproduce here in the simulator. What I really tried to work on though was to really simulate the drag coefficient of having a fifth engine that doesn't run under Underneath the left wing of your airplane. Really, this plane should be a bit harder to fly. And maybe should be trimmed differently. Since you have like, what is it, like seven tons of engines on your left wing. We might want to take off this hero of the day. The airplane whose job it is to transport another 747 engine. Come on, let's take off here now. We've gone full power. Looking good. Let's configure everything. This is a short runway. Let's take a look. I'm not going to trim the rudder or anything and just see if this thing has some sort of tendency to move to the left. Looking very fine. All right, let's take a look. All right, planes so far not veering at all. Hmm, flies relatively normally. Come on, let's take off now. We need to get off this runway in order to not overrun. That is a tail strike. Honestly, I should have probably picked a bit of a more comfortable of runways here for this test. But there we go. We've been able to take off our five engines, 747. Looking good. Now, you might wonder also, what is this interesting pool ring here? And this is ge genuinely a 3D model of a pool ring. They had that in real life added to the airplane as well. In general, they move the insides of the engine before putting it onto the airplane, which I guess makes the drag a whole lot worse. And you can feel that too here. This plane, as described by the pilots who actually did this operation, flies very much just like normal. Even though, of course, in real life, they had to make a stop. To bring the engine from Sydney to Joburg, they did a stop landing in order to refuel 
because this thing just takes a whole lot more fuel and also puts a whole lot more weight so they couldn't bring as much fuel to not overweight the airplane whatever it is this is actually working pretty well and it's been done a few times before and it's kind of also in aviation history done before for example on the 707 but i want to try a little bit more than that i mean i could I mean, maybe let's see if we can make the engine bigger. <laughs> All right, something like that. Now, what I've done here is make the normal Rolls-Royce engine of the surplane five times bigger. Mm -hmm. I think that should work. All right, okay, we might be in a little bit of trouble here. Um, I might have put an engine that is maybe a bit too big. I think this could be like GE9 T size, but a bit more. Very huge engine indeed. And as you can see, the plane is kind of standing on it. Of course, I've tried to, you know, also simulate once again the physical properties. Uh, it won't be really possible to take off though, right? Because we are, uh, plane's not moving. Um, I might want to spawn into midair. Let's see. We're stalling according to the airplane, but that can't be. Come on, full power, please. No, shut up. Power. All right, now we've got a Boeing 747 that carries a big engine, a G90. And as you can see still, you know, I mean, we wouldn't be able to land very well. We're flying. We're flying well. As you can see, this is right now proof that this body here is actually registered. Not, doesn't make this plane the most efficient, that's for sure. All right, there we go. Although something I could try is to make that engine work too. Like, what if that also provides power. There we go. Kind of like that. Can you see that blue dot right there? And because this engine is five times bigger, we have to make it five times stronger. There we go. That's a whole lot better. All right now, flying a 747, the GE90 that actually works. All right, there we go. Let's go full power with this airplane now. <laughs> All right. Oh, yes. This is definitely very fast of a 747 now. Check out how much air this sucker is sucking in. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. We're going to a very fast, low pass here by the island in our incredibly quick 747 that's going to run out of fuel really quickly. But there we go. This is what I'm talking about. Yes, everybody looking good. You know, it's just another story of the 747 being this incredibly versatile aircraft. Look how beautiful the queen looks. I mean, Qantas weren't the only one to do it. I mean, Qu I mean NASA also tried their fifth engine model. That one was a whole lot weirder, but you know, 747 can shoot rocket up to the skies or carry a space shuttle. It's a plane that doesn't really care. And I think that should be celebrated. And we do that here with our fifth engine today. So everybody, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, good night. Now, thank you very much to my highly supporting members like Jamie Ashton, Mike C, James Duram, Ragings, Met RLG, Matt Van Z, Moritz, Bellhausen, Knots Enthusiast, Shadow, New the York, Ryland Williams, Kelly Chaos, John O'Brien, and I'm addicted to Airbus A380s. Thank you.